If you're bit by a Gila monster, you won't die. Used to be a true statement. After all, the last death from this venomous lizard happened in 1930, when modern medicine was lacking. And I was so confident in this fact that I proudly said it online for the world to hear in a video about three years ago. But as of this February, I was proved wrong, when a man in Colorado was killed by his pet Gila monster, prompting a lot of people to point out that I give really terrible advice. But did this man really die just from the venom itself, or was it because of one critical thing he had in common with the man that died in 1930? Well, now that the autopsy of the victim has come out, we have some answers. But before dropping the big secret, I figured I'd fulfill something else I said in that video. So this lizard is from the southwestern United States, especially Arizona, and they do leak into New Mexico, so hopefully someday I can see one of these guys in my home state, but they are very rare there. So, to see if this lizard truly deserves to be seen as a life-threatening menace, I drove five hours from Albuquerque into the heart of Gila territory to do some real-life monster hunting. Alrighty guys, we are in Gila monster country. We are in the very southwestern tip of New Mexico where Arizona spills over and sends some of its amazing creatures our way. And I am hoping to find a Gila monster in my home state. And what a gorgeous habitat we're in, truly unlike any other New Mexico desert I've been in. Just about everything has thorns on it. And just about every creature here has venom in it, including the only venomous lizard in America. So we're going to hike around and hopefully find one of these amazing lizards and see once and for all if its venom is enough to kill you. The landscape of the Chihuahuan Desert is filled with so many deadly nightmare-inducing creatures, which usually happen to be the ones I'd love to get in front of the camera the most, including America's deadliest scorpion and the most lethal rattlesnake on Earth. However, I only have one full day here to find my target species, so I have to cast those silly distractions to the side and stay focused. But luckily, I've timed my arrival perfectly to give myself the best possible chance of finding a Gila monster. You might look around me and think, man, that looks like the hottest place on Earth. And during most of the summer, it is like well over 100. But we are here in May for two reasons. One, I don't want to die of heat stroke. And two, Gila monsters, it is their breeding season right now, so during the day, they're going to be walking around looking for mates, battling over territory, so we're hoping to intersect one on its journey, or else I'd have to come here way later when it's super hot and Gila monsters at that time are only active at night. So this is our best chance to film one during the day in prime conditions, and I really hope we can get it done. As the hours drag on, my chances of finding a Gila monster get lower and lower as they look for midday shelters to rest out of sight. But after distractedly staring at some ants, granted they were very cool ants, I finally saw the creature that caused me to fangirl harder than I ever have for anything else. Oh my gosh, come here, come here. What is reality? Look at that. I am in freaking awe. That is a heel monster. That is a wild New Mexican homegrown. Oh my goodness, we've been walking this desert for so long, and to actually see this thing, highlight of my life. Oh my goodness, look at that gorgeous lizard. Now just look at the colors of this animal. There is nothing else like it on Earth. That gorgeous patterning, really alerting predators that this is not something to mess with. The patterns on this lizard look like some ancient and forgotten text, and their striking colors warn potential predators of its deadly bite. Gila monsters are one of the few animals that only use their venom for defense and not to kill prey. These lizards scour the landscape, smelling with their forked tongue for eggs and juvenile mammals. And once it finds food, Gila monsters can eat a third of their body weight in a single sitting a third of all the food it'll need to eat for that entire year. All right guys, he's taken up shelter right under the shade of this tree. And let me just tell you, there's no better feeling than to go to a region of your state, uh, a, a tiny minuscule range of mountains that you've been recommended to go, the exact time of day, the exact slope, the, the, the southeast facing slope where the books have said to find this animal, and for it to all come together and to actually see this thing. This is 
the single coolest lizard in America, the largest native lizard. And this is pretty close to max size. I mean, the end of his tail almost looks a little bit nibbled off, like a predator may have bit it. But I mean, that's like 18 inches maybe. I mean, that is a legit Gila monster. All right, now he's taken up shelter right underneath this cactus and it gives us a great chance to get a nice close look at this lizard. First things first, let's just look at those scales. It almost looks like little beads of armor and that's exactly what it is. Every single one of those scales has a bone hiding underneath it. It's wearing just one of the most amazing suits of armor in the animal kingdom. And whether it's the fangs of a snake or the talons of a hawk, very few creatures can get through this armor. And even if they could, they have to contest with the bite of this venomous lizard. All right, now let's talk about the venom of the only venomous lizard in America. Now, let's, let, let's put the whole death thing to the side for a bit. What happens normally when a Gila monster bi bites you? First off, their venom gland is in their bottom jaw. They can't inject it like a snake. So for this animal to be able to put its venom in you, it has to latch on and you can see how big its head is. Those huge jaw muscles give it a vice-like grip. So when it wants to bite something, it'll latch on, bite with the force of a pit bull and dig its teeth in you. And it'll kind of massage that venomous saliva into you. And what it does is that besides excruciating pain, I've heard it's like one of the worst feelings you could sustain here in the Southwest, but you're gonna feel some vomiting. You're gonna be very sweaty. And a main very serious symptom of its venom is a massive drop in blood pressure. So that can very much affect you. But for the longest time, since 1930, there has not been a death from a Gila monster. And widely it was thought, if you're bit by this thing, you're gonna be fine. Well, you're gonna be in a living hell of agony, but you'll be fine. But this year, that man in Colorado died. So why did that happen? Why did that man die when so many others bitten by Gila monsters survived? Well, there's a few things that go into it, but first, let's start with a play-by-play -play of what happened. This wasn't a little nip. This was a pet Gila monster this man owned, and it latched onto him for four minutes. Four minutes of that Gila monster injecting, well, not injecting, massaging that venom into that man. And that is quite a lot of time to have venom as potent as a rattlesnake being put into you. Now, Gila monsters don't have the quantity of something like a rattlesnake, but four minutes. Now you may think, man, why didn't he just take the Gila monster off? Well, I have been bitten by my pet turtle and that thing hurt an obscene amount. And I wasn't just gonna rip them off my arm. It's my pet, I care about this thing. And normally if you're bit by a Gila monster, you're gonna wanna submerge it in water to make it let go so it can come up for air or like pry its mouth open with a knife or pliers. And if this thing is your pet, you're not as willing to do that. So I personally had my pet turtle on me for about five minutes. So I can see how you would be cautious to, you know, hesitant to hurt your pet in order to remove it from biting you. So four minutes this Gila monster was latched onto this man and for about two hours, he did not seek medical attention. He was fading in and out of consciousness. And by the time he got to the hospital, I believe four days later, this man passed away. Now, this wasn't purely an act of this creature's venom, at least in my opinion. There is a commonality between this man and the man that died in 1930. Both of them had liver issues. Now, when you're poisoned, your liver is the organ that processes that material. So there's a good chance that because they both had liver problems, that was the factor that made that Gila monster bite fatal and all others not. Studies have shown that people with compromised livers are more susceptible to snake venom, even from species that aren't normally dangerous. Now, I'm not a doctor and this is just a theory, but there is a chance that because of these victims compromised livers, their bodies reacted poorly to the venom and led to their deaths. 
But this isn't the only possible cause. Studies are being done on the pet Gila monster to see if its venom happened to be more potent than others. Or there's a chance the victim's body happened to react to the venom for some other reason, like an allergy. So in my mind, I don't think we should see this animal as a lethal killer. There are some extenuating circumstances that could put you at higher risk of dying from being bit by this creature. But as long as we don't mess with them, we look at them from a distance, and we take care not to be bit in the first place, I think this is truly one of the greatest animals out there and possibly my favorite animal encounter I've ever had. I hope you guys enjoyed the video, loved seeing this Gila monster as much as I did, and very, very happy we found it in New Mexico. I'll see you guys next time.